Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pool. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pool. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products. 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. On this week's Michigan Magazine, we give you a brief glimpse and preview of the wonders of the equestrian spirit in Michigan as we join the Michigan Trail Riders on one of their August family trail rides through the Manistee Forest near Kalkaska. This is a prelude of upcoming segments we'll share with you, spotlighting the MTRA's growing popularity after celebrating over 50 years of existence. But first, we open the Michigan Magazine archives for our visit with another artist, Bob Mowry of Frederick. Bob creates beautiful carved works of art out of discarded antlers from the forests of northern Michigan. We'll witness his technique as he explains his love of the art and how his hobby became a full-time occupation. All that and more on this edition of Michigan Magazine. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Planning your special day? Canyons Resort on beautiful Sage Lake can make it happen. Enjoy a beachfront wedding. Everything in one location. Food, beverage, lodging, and entertainment. Canyons handles everything from floral arrangements to the wedding cake. Call now to reserve your special day at Canyons. The love of art and nature make for an unbeatable combination to the inspired Michiganian. Our journey today on Michigan Magazine takes us to the studios of antler artist Bob Mowry. Now retired and living in the forests north of Grilling, Bob and his wife maintain a studio and workshop where Bob loses himself and his love of carving into shed antlers of deer, moose, and elk. Wilderness scenes of places lovers of the great outdoors will recognize in a heartbeat, and dreamers of such places will lose themselves in his renditions. Join us now as we spend the morning with Bob to visit and witness firsthand his seemingly effortless technique that's taken years to develop. Beautiful day here in oh, northern yes. Michigan. Oh, yes. Just oh, beautiful. my goodness. I can tell you uh, have an eye for the outdoors and the wilderness. It's a love of yours, right? Well, we've, uh, we've handled antler for many years. Uh, I was a uh, me measurer for Commemorative Bucks of Michigan. Okay. Did that for about 11 years and got used to handling a lot of large antler. And when my wife and I first saw antler carvings, we just fell in love with the carvings. Oh. So that's about all I do now is antler carving. Really? Well, Bob, here we're in the wilderness of Frederick, and it is such a peaceful, peaceful area of the state. I mean, you, you probably get a lot of work done out here, don't you, as far as carving of your antlers? We do, and I'm uh, fortunate enough to be in the position where I can do this at my leisure. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all we do now. We're, we retired from the trucking business about two years ago and uh, had been trying to find time while we were doing that to do the antler carvings and they take so many hours it was just really hard to do. You found your uh, your antler carvings taking over the time you had? Yes, uh, yes. The wife would have to come road. to the shop and get me. <laughs> Tell me, you know, you've been here five hours or six hours. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, when, when did the bug hit you? How did this go back a bit in time? And uh, in Probably first... about five years ago. Five years ago. We had first seen the antler carving and uh, uh, the, the wife looked at it and said, you know, you can do that. And I said, yeah, I, I probably could. Uh -huh. And I love to handle the antler in hand because, like I say, I had worked with the Commemorative Bucks of Michigan for about 11 years. 
So uh, I don't do that anymore. I uh, put all my time into the antlers now. We're always looking for antler to carve on. Uh, we purchase antler from time to time from the different deer ranches here in uh, northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. And find the moose and caribou antler from, uh, oh, maybe uh, other outdoorsmen or taxidermist outfitters that might have uh, several pieces at their home. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we'll barter on the work. Uh, this gentleman might have quite a bit of antler, but want an antler carving. So mm -hmm. that works out good for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so we just, uh, we, we sell the pieces uh, at Northern uh, Concepts in Grayland. Okay. A new shop there. Uh, they've been uh, working with us really good, nice people. Yeah, but you had a, quite a bit of good response so far oh, yeah. as far as your cards. Yeah. And going. that's that's the main thing, the response that we get on the antler, because it is different, you don't see a lot of antler carving. Mm -hmm. You do see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people working in wood, mm -hmm. but right. when you see antler carving, it's always different. Right. And uh, no, no two, two pieces are the same. Well, that yeah. brings up an interesting point, too. Uh, if there's not that many out there really doing it, where did you go for guidance? And how did you... I'm you just... Uh, you strong, you had a it's pretty, all self-taught. Uh, you had a pretty I've, strong artistic background, did you? Or? I've always been able to draw a little mm -hmm. bit. I took uh, commercial art at Wayne County Community College mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've always been able to draw just enough kind of to get by mm -hmm. and that's what we do now we uh, we find an antler it may have to be cleaned or bleached before we do it uh, and then we'll just take a pencil and we draw on the animals or the outdoor scene we want to do and then we just start uh, carving down from there I um, see does uh, do the, does the antler dictate what you will put on that or do you pretty much have an idea of what you want uh, to put on it first? a lot of times the antlers will uh, mm -hmm. you're limited to space that's why it's nice if you can get a nice moose antler. Mm -hmm. uh, you have more area to work with, and you can do more things with it. But uh, when you start getting down to the white tail antler, uh, again, you're, you're limited to the space that, that you can use. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a lot of them with, uh, with a lot of uh, pine trees uh, to fill in. Uh, I put fences. We can run a fence you know, along the beams mm -hmm. of the white tail antlers. And then you'll find people that collect wolves, and people that collect deer, people that collect bear. It's, it's uh, always different. And uh, so we try to do something different all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people collect eagles, so we'll do you know, so many with eagles. And now, consistent is, is, is our antlers pretty consistent in their density? I mean, or I'm trying to figure out how you would decide that that eagle would be in flight like that with no support. Right. Do you, is, does, does that something you take into consideration, or are they pretty you much have consistent? You to be extremely careful. Most antler inside is very porous, mm -hmm. so it gets really soft the deeper you go. Uh, we, I've worked, this particular eagle here, we worked uh, to the point where if you set it in a window, you can actually see the sunlight coming through the wings. It's, it's extremely thin here. Uh, We've had a lot of response from that uh, when people mm -hmm. find that out how thin that is. Your caribou antler is pretty thin to begin with. You know, uh, the white tail antler is the hardest to work on. It seems to have uh, the most density to it. Uh, once you get through the outer shell, it's it's not too bad, but it seems to take the longest. Mm -hmm. uh, elk antler is very uh, very porous inside, uh, to where once you hit the, the center, it's it's pretty easy to to move through. But most of the pieces will go 25 to 30 hours on the carving alone, and that doesn't include the cleaning or bleaching or, or making a base uh, for the antlers to sit on. Some of the bases get uh, a lot of stonework. And, uh, mm. and that's that, the, the key part to the, uh, to the, to the whole artistic piece is uh, the surrounding. It's just like matting a mm -hmm. picture, I bet. Exactly. You, know, you have to have a way to display. Mm -hmm. you know? What's your favorite medium as far as antlers? Oh wow! Uh, elk uh, probably, probably the moose antler because you can do more with it. Uh, and and, you, and when you think that pieces, especially like the moose antler that have come out of the wild, the caribou antler, all of this antler came from nothing. Mm -hmm. It grew. It's a living thing. And then it was carried around the tundra for so many months. The places that these antlers have been, and then somehow found a way to our shop. Mm -hmm. to where we have tried to improve on this, which is near impossible, to take something that beautiful and try to improve on it. Uh, 
sometimes it can get you a little frustrated, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. I'll, I'll come into the house many times and tell the wife I'm having the conniptions, uh -huh. you know, if you, everybody's had conniptions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you put a piece aside right. for a while and mm -hmm. then you think about it, you keep looking at it and you think, I, I can work this out. Mm -hmm. So the response is, is telling me that we're doing a good job. That's, that's probably all worth the, everything that you ever did. Yeah. You see people who first walk up or stop in a window and look in the window and, and back up, you know, and say, look at this. And because the majority of the people I think in the state haven't seen antler cargo. Mm -hmm. And when they first see it, you know, the reaction is, wow, this is different. You know, and in a world where so many things are, are mass produced now, you know, it's like the public is just crying out for things that are handmade. Any type of item that's handmade or different. Mm -hmm. so. And the detail in your carvings is just wonderful, and that is key. You've got to take into consideration the tools that you use. What tools do you use? I mean, you just can't go well, at that with a Whitland knife. I may start out with a Dremel tool, just your average Dremel tool, and trace the work out uh, to the point where we're starting to work down into it a ways. And the fine detail work, I use a power crafter tool, which is an air turbine tool runs at about 400,000 RPM. It's faster than a dentist drill. Mm -hmm. And uh, it does some really fine detail work. That all runs on air. From time to time, to add a little color, we'll add a little chalk. I've tried different paints that just didn't really do anything for us and found that the chalk pastels worked really good to give us a soft color in there, mm -hmm. which may you know, uh, bring the animals or whatever we're doing out, mm -hmm. out of the carving. And you pretty much learned this yourself, I mean, for trial and error. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never carved anything mm -hmm. till the day that we tried carving antler. Uh -huh. And it's been, it's been an adventure. <laughs> uh, every time you do a piece, you learn something different. You even uh, have times when you have an emotional experience. When you're try, starting to finish a piece that you worked on for maybe weeks, and you're getting near the end, and, and you look at it, to you, when you say, wow, mm -hmm. this is nice, then you know you've done a nice job. Right. You know? Do you have more than one project going at once, or do you concentrate on one? Mainly just on one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one of the things is not to get in a hurry. You can only work as fast as the tools will allow you to work, and if you start getting in a hurry, you're going to get in trouble. As with any accomplished artist, Bob should know that experience is the best teacher. And inspiration can never be pinned down to any one thing. Bob told us that it comes from everyone and everything. And when it strikes, it comes from a combination. Bob's demure was an example of the patience and dedication that shines through in the detail of each piece he completes. Uh, Barry, this is a uh, white tail antler. Come from one of the white tail ranches here in northern Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful six point. And what we've done, we put a wolf on here, and uh, we got a little pine trees uh, with a little color in there, and the moon. Uh, several people that we know collect uh, wolf pieces. Mm. The wolves are very big yes, right now. They are so we did this with a wolf on it. Bob Bowery of Frederick, Michigan, another wonderful example of Michigan's inspired artists along the back roads of this Great Lake State. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's and Mile for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mile. Hale Hardware, your do center at Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Oscoda County's Timberland Quill Trail. Tour our Quill Trail next time you're in northeastern Lower Michigan. Cedar Valley Golf Club on Weaver Road, Cummins, Michigan. The beautiful woodworker shop located directly across the street from the Skyline Event Center. Detweiler Chalets of Fairview open all year. New recreational trails on man-made lakes. Cummins Market in downtown Cummins. The best little store in town. The Kirtland Insurance Agency, your independent agent in Lewiston and Mayo. Fairview Food Market, famous for their fresh and home smoked meats, located on the corner in Fairview. 
Historic Mod Dealers of Luzerne, your hosts, Mo and Bird Smith, invite you to enjoy good food, drink, and company. The equestrian spirit is alive and well in Michigan. If you're a horse-loving Michigander, you more than likely know about the wonderful opportunities afforded to horse lovers in the state in the form of well-marked trails and support groups of fellow equestrians. Michigan Magazine, in the past few months, have found ourselves on the back roads and the trails learning more about the Michigan Trail Riders, a group dedicated to making the Michigan experience of group rides from shore to shore and everything in between. They've been organized for over 50 years now. We've got a special look at the organizers and their events they plan on upcoming segments of Michigan Magazine. Today we preview one of their trail rides that took them through Kalkaska County, a ride that necessitated a river crossing at the Manistee River. As you see, the organization draws all ages and has become a premier family event, getting kids and adults away from their electronic gadgets and phones for a true wilderness experience. Join us for just a moment now as we witness a portion of this August 2014 ride through the Manistee Forest near Kalkaska. No words needed from this point on. Just a friendly reminder to join us throughout the next few months for more information and visits with those that make horsemen a true Michigan equestrian experience. Hingeman Acres, Canoe Livery and Resort on M33, just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. For home, medical, and health care products, visit Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of Rose City City Limits. Rose City Drug has a complete diabetic department, including shoes. Serving Michigan for over 20 years. Rose City Drug, Rose City. Well, thanks for joining us this week on Michigan Magazine. Time for us both to get up and get out onto the Michigan back roads and enjoy the Michigan spirit wherever it leads us. Well, it's time for a big shout out to thank those who wrote, actually wrote, pencil and paper to us here at West Branch, Michigan about our show. Our mailbags keep getting fuller as the word gets out about our adventures here on RFD TV. Thank you very much. And a tip of the hat to the Mulestein family of China Springs, Texas. Thank you very much for writing. The Beelan family, Dean and Sandra of Anchorage, Alaska. The Buhays of Zeeland, Michigan. Dennis Ward of Alma, Arkansas and the Browns of Saginaw, Michigan. Thanks so much. Just a few of those we'd like to thank who actually took a moment to write Michigan Magazine personally. Thanks for your support. We love hearing from our viewers. And one way to say thank you is to give you this week's phrase of the week. It is, Happy 50th to the Michigan Trail Riders. You know what to do. Our email address is iwatchmichiganmag.com.
Magazine at gmail.com. Our physical address is Michigan Magazine, P.O. Box 424, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Thanks so much for joining us each week, and we hope you'll keep in touch via our social media outlets that includes Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and a lot more. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com. Tim Lizzie's 50s and 60s Diner of Mayo, a Michigan dining destination. Cops and Donuts and the Traffic Stop Diner, open seven days a week and 24-7 during the summer. Amish Country Natural Products of Mayo, featuring area arts, crafts, food, and all natural products. Luzerne Hardware, downtown Luzerne, more than just a hardware. Hitchman Acres, Cabins and Canoes of Mayo. The Mayo Mud Bogs, July 5th and August the 30th. 